Hey guys, Jacob with Jacob Comics. All right, we have a really fun episode. Today we're going to be reviewing Spider-Man Exodus. It's uh, well, Spider-Man 2099 Exodus number two. And uh, before we get dived on into that, I do want to let you guys know about our 300 subscriber giveaway. Now when we hit 300 subscribers, we're going to be giving this book away. It's the Absolute Carnage number one. Murder Rose store exclusive crazy cereal box front cover looking and all you have to do to, to win the or have a chance to win is like the video comment down below and be subscribed to the channel and when we hit 300 subscribers we'll raffle the book off and someone will win all right guys let's get dived on into the issue now as always there's a couple things that we got to go over before we get completely in I first want to let you guys know that we are going to go heavy into spoilers so if you don't want to be spoiled for spider-man 2099 exodus number two that's your warning the next thing we always do is shout out the creative team because without the creative team we wouldn't have a comic book now first we have the writer is steve orlando the artist is marco castillo the colorist is antonio fabella the letters are done by vcs joe caramagna and the cover that I have right here is done by Ken Lashley and Juan Fernandez. And I apologize in yesterday's episode, that is not Winter Soldier 2099, that is Valkyrie 2099. And this is going to be the first appearance of her, I believe. Uh, Loki 2099 actually showed up years ago in the 90s book, so this is definitely not his first appearance for those of you that were confused. Uh, no, he was in the Sp uh, Spider-Man 2099, like number 8 or 9 or 10. It, yeah, er, early, early teens, if, if, if anything. But yeah, he was way back in the 90s. He is his first appearance. All right, so let's get dived on into the issue now that I've kind of squared that away. This is uh, part 2, Spider-Man 2099 Exodus is the first appearance of Valkyrie 2099. All right. Let's get dived on into it. Now, there is a foreword here, and that reads, After a massive celestial body crashes into the wastelands outside of Nueva York, a new Garden of Eden erupts from the crash site, offering unimaginable power. After some digging, Miguel, Miguel O'Hara, the Spider-Man of 2099, has uncovered that Norman Osborn, the original Green Goblin, is behind the black card-wielding upper-class Illuminati group the Cabal, who want the Celestial Garden and its power for themselves. But Spider-Man and his allies won't give up the Celestial Garden without a fight. And we start off, and uh, we see here that um, we actually have Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara, talking with uh, Valkyrie 2099, kind of off camera and you don't see her yet. And she says, didn't take you for a driver. He says, parting gift from a ghost, invisible even to cabal surveillance. She says, and what brings you to the burnt bread basket, Spider-Man? Invisibly, of course. He says, Norman Osborn, one time master of evil, now proudly announcing himself as the cabal's founder. I killed his bounty on the celestial garden. Now he's got to come for it himself, got to get his hands dirty. Norman and his cabal have climbed above the law. Might as well be gods. I came out here to find the real thing. Plenty of stories of people saved by a Loki while traveling the wastes. She says, a Loki. He's not one of those posers from Alchemax's Aesir program. Those were just humans hopped up on meta drugs and marketing. I should know. When Loki first walked into town, there was no question he was the real deal. And let me tell you, I hated it. And it shows Loki, and he says to think. Some people can walk 40 days with no sign of amusement. And Valkyrie 2099 thinks he could have just told me his scheme up front, but his honesty was long dead, right beside his humility. As we see Valkyrie 2099 fighting, and she says, Have at thee, vulture filth. And Loki says, Cannon fodder dressed as a shield maiden. Winged cannibals filling the skies. My senses are a flutter. Look at you. The only thing worse than acting like a Valkyrie is doing it badly. She replies, Be gone. Undertown is well protected. You think I don't recognize you, trickster? 
And he says, I'd be hurt if you didn't. But Trickster? It's Loki. Last survivor of Asgard, icon of the wastes, god of outcasts. There he is. Lo Loki in all, in all his glory. And he says, with the Trickster buried away deep, so you hope. This was their alpha, by the way. The plumage was a sure sign before you set it ablaze. She says, that's just one. Sorry, I didn't stop to count the feathers while getting the other hundred. He says, how inefficient. With the alpha dead, the flock will be directionless. Thundertown seems more than equipped to defend itself. I believe in nothing if not self-determination. Such a performance, though. Why put on a long dead Valkyrie for fun? She says, because I am a Valkyrie. He says, of course you are. And as I watched them die in combat, I suppose you were on a sabbatical. And she says, what of you, last survivor? More like deserter. He says, I absolutely ran. Valor was not the word of the day. But which of us is playing hero to the valiant? She says, I, I survived Asgard's fall by my own blade. I, pl I paid the blood price. He says, one moment. The bird knows who he is. So do the townsfolk. But you, here, friend, and do use it creatively, you're lying, woman. Admirable, if it didn't remind me of my people's extinction. You're human. My mighty Valkyrie enthusiast. So if you were at Asgard's end, it wasn't by my side. She says, even if that's true, I, I don't dare answer to you, coward. And she said, he says, I'd say you. And, uh... Some guy comes up and, and tells Lo, uh, Loki, says, Stranger, you have my thanks. And he says, Violence is its own thanks, urchin. Apologies, woman. Now where were we? Ah, yes. What the foolish call cowardice, I call strategy. I couldn't save Asgard then, and dead but brave, I never would. So I took my leave, but not before watching my mother die. Which makes your charade, bold as it is, in extremely poor taste, even by my standards. You think I could ever forget? When the humans couldn't replace us, they tried to destroy us. Alchemex's first Aesir program was an abject failure. When they couldn't make corporate-branded deities work, they went back to formula. Asgard's extinction was the proof of their concept. For their second attempt, custom Aesir soldiers Ragnarok on demand. It, I can still smell it like mold blood wine. Mysterium, the mutant wonder element woven into that serpent that consumed us, atomized into poisons that choked us, forged into weapons that butchered us. That's right, I saw you. I do know you're a Valkyrie, but not one of ours. You didn't survive the fall of Asgard. You enacted it. And she said, Alchemex, they, the money was unlike anything I'd seen. I couldn't afford to care. But when I got there and when I saw true Valkyries dying, I couldn't pull the trigger. I ran like you. And since then, I've tried to live up to the real thing. He says, and what luck, your chance has arrived. My wandering is not aimless. I've been following a blast pattern, first scraps of armor, then as I close in, more auspicious bits, brain matter, sprayed from a celestial, cosmic whale fall. Asgard may be dead and my magic with it, but there is still hope in the wonders of this holy flesh. Find me the Rex epicenter and revive what you killed. And she says, can you ride, Trickster? As we see um, them riding off towards the, uh, the crashed landing site of the Celestial and uh, on um, these horses that, that she's actually uh, scientifically created. And then they, they finally arrive there on the, the flying horses and uh, he, he said he, he kind of brings out like a like a glass jar and fills the glass jar with some uh, some water from a lake that's that's at the garden and then he basically says like we're gonna take this and go back to Asgard and try to see if we can like rejuvenate life back into it um, so she's like but the bifrost gate's been broken and he's like it's okay I have like this one last bifrost gate use uh, in a in a hammer that he and he uses that and so they 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 get up to to there and he ends up pouring the uh, the uh, the mysterium onto the dying remains of Asgard and it, it brings up this uh, mysterium monster this big serpent 
and he says the beast yet festers and uh the serpent comes out and um it's been left by alchemex to kind of defend the area and uh, Loki uses like his last spell that he has. He said earlier that he'd lost all his magic, but he he tells her that he actually lied and he has one more one more magic spell in him, and he uses the magic spell to uh, to kill the the big dragon that Alchemex had left there, and at the same time kind of infuse the ground with with enough energy, and and then he tells her. Because she's he's kind of sacrificed himself with this last spell, and she goes Loki, and as he's dying, he he says all of Alchemex's weapons have been diffused, but my life it seems, you are here for my one man show after all, catching my magic for a sacrifice spell somewhere. My brother laughs. Valkyrie says, why die for nothing? Asgard can't be saved. Loki replies, but it could be peopled anew by my blood in your hand she says what the hell does that mean and he says it means you were an easy mark from the start my true people were never as guardians but the outcasts mortals love to turn their back on those they deem unworthy those like we left in undertown deserve a tipping of the scales a new valhalla where they hold the power and who better to lead them there than a valkyrie once I came to Asgard in the name of destruction and ran from it in shame, Valkyrie thinks. But there, on its ruined streets, Loki died in my arms and trusted Asgard's future to me. I owed him my hope, my shot at redemption. And knowing him, that was his trick all along. Loki never wanted the old Asgard back. His last spell left, left behind clean streets for a new city of outcasts, an Asgard for his kind, the forsaken and misjudged. All he was waiting for was someone to build it. Blended with celestial cells, Loki's blood became godhood in a jar, a reprieve from mortal rigors for those who suffer them most, Valkyrie thinks. With me, like the Valkyries I honor, delivering the needy from their daily battlefield. On earth they were untouchable, left to scrape by to survive, but through him they can ascend. So we see the, uh, the scene there where, where Loki dies and passes on everything to Valkyrie or the leadership of, of New Valhalla. Through him his home is is reborn as only it could be, as only he would allow it to be in his image, and in Loki's Asgard, all outcasts are welcome. These are the new Asgardians, drawn not from above but below. For them, it's a new day, but for you, it's bad news, Spider-Man. You came all the way out here for a god's ear, and Loki was the greatest strategist to walk this or any world. But he's also very dead. Spider-Man replies, Dead with a new generation of homegrown gods to survive him? Listen to yourself, Valkyrie. I came to recruit a single god. You're telling me you've got an army of them. Valkyrie replies, I do. But these people, they've suffered generations of abuse. The Cabal is just the type of mortal horror I've delivered them from. The new Asgardians deserve peace. I won't ask them to fight for you. But when the time comes, I will be there. Until then, a bit of advice from someone who's been there to take down gods. The first thing you do is make them mortal. Next, Desperate Acts of Vengeance 2099. <laughs> so that's the... That is the end of Spider-Man 2099 Exodus number 2. And, um, again, like, it, it's very reminiscent of the first issue. We're kind of introduced to a new character, and in the same issue, uh, we also get their origin story. So we get a new character and a new origin story. And, and again, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, 
I'm I'm digging Valkyrie. I think she's a pretty cool character. Uh, there she is right there. And yeah, I don't know. I I was digging it. I I like the artwork and um. Orlando's kind of writing a good story. I liked uh. It it kind of, the the way that he uh, he verbalized uh, the Loki. It, in this story it definitely reminded me of the loki from the mcu and so i could kind of i could kind of envision that this was this was just you know loki from the mcu in another 80 years and and things have gone on and and uh and so yeah no it was it was kind of impactful as well he passed on and he passed his uh powers if you will or yeah gave gave the new valkyrie um valhalla basically <laughs> i thought it was cool i don't know guys i'm a de i'm i love 2099 stuff i can't help it <laughs> all right guys i give i give spider-man 2099 exodus number two a thumbs up um this is definitely a fun read i i sort of do kind of hope that issue three isn't an entirely other character and another origin story um i i'm hoping they kind of have played that card you got two new characters and okay now what are we gonna do let's let's move this story forward a little bit and and you know it's cool to add some new some new pieces and also give them a good a good backstory and and develop their character a little bit before you just throw them into the fray so I do appreciate that. However, I would like to see the action start sooner here, or at least like the Spider-Man action. I'm a spider. I want to see Spider-Man 2099 a little more, but I'm definitely still enjoying these and give them a thumbs up. All right, guys, that's what I have today. Remember, like, comment, and subscribe for your chance to win the Absolute Carnage number one Murderos variant cover. And if you like this kind of content, click the link below and help support the channel and uh, buy some comics off my eBay store and I'll, I'll send some comics to you. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow and have a great day.